that's essentially how the oscillator and to a certain degree how jet ventilation works. You're basically given little tiny packages that are pushing air in and the air that's in the alveolus is coming out. So it's happening like this. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families. Bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU doc. Now, I've gotten several requests to do the difference between high frequency jet ventilation and high frequency oscillatory ventilation. They're both high frequency machines but th there are some differences to them and there are also some similarities. So let's get to exactly what is high frequency. So high frequency ventilation essentially is the ability to give really, really, really small tidal volumes, meaning really, really small packages of air, if you will, into the alveolus, but you're doing it at really, really, really high rates. So normally a newborn baby may be breathing about 30 or 40 times a minute, with high frequency, you can make them breathe 900 times a minute. What? Now, normally, obviously, we would pass out because our CO2 would drop completely. The difference and why we can do this so fast, 900 with the oscillator and about 500 with jet ventilation, is that you're able to do so with tiny, tiny packaged breath. As opposed to each time you breathe, you take a nice deep breath and then you let it out and a nice deep breath and then you let it out. With high frequency, you take very, very tiny breaths. The normal tidal volume for a newborn baby is about four milliliters per kilogram each breath. Now, what's the normal tidal volume, for example, on the oscillator? It's 0.01 milliliters per kilogram. So you can see much, much, much smaller breaths. And as opposed to the nice expansion of the lung and then breathing out that air and breathing out that tidal volume, what the oscillator and jet ventilation does is that it gives you little tiny packaged breaths. This is exactly uh, true, but the idea to think about this is essentially like those pencils where they, they come with little tiny cartridge, cartridges already on the inside and once you're done with that, you take that off and the next package goes in and you take that tip off and the next one goes in and you can put it back on the top and so on and so forth. That's essentially how the oscillator and in, to a certain degree how jet ventilation works. You're basically given little tiny packages that are pushing air in and the air that's in the alveolus is coming out. So it's happening like this. <laughs> As the packages are coming in, they're coming out. Again, this is not really physiologic and not exactly true, but it gives you a visual idea of how it is that we can actually do this. Now, as I mentioned before, when you're taking a nice deep breath in and out, if you were doing this 900 times a minute, five, 600 times a minute, this would obviously cause a lot of volume trauma, trauma of the alveolus being extended. You can also cause barotrauma. You've got a lot of pressure you can cause sheer stress. Essentially that movement is causing stretch and is causing damage to the tissue. What the oscillator and jet basically do is that they are doing very, very small oscillations around a mean air pressure so that you are actually not causing that big stretch and causing that damage. You're basically minimizing. And, uh, and this is where the whole idea of being a gentler ventilator, especially for those preemies, that's the whole idea. It's gentler because you're not fully expanding the whole alveolus and then collapsing, okay? So that's where it comes from. Now, just to be my, my, my disclaimer or my honesty there is that from an evidence-based medicine standpoint, there are some studies showing that, you know, put in, for example, ELBW or VOBW infants, infants less than uh, 1500 grams, 
straight like prophylactically on the oscillator or on, on high frequency ventilation there are small studies showing that there may be an improvement or a decrease in the development of chronic lung disease or bronchopulmonary dysplasia the evidence is not so big and, and not so compromising that you would you know trash your ventilators and go straight to the oscillator or jet ventilation from the get-go but a lot of hospitals do practice that way a lot of other hospitals practice normal conventional mechanical ventilation and that's fine too as long as you're careful and know how to use it very well all right now let's get to the differences between the oscillator and jet ventilation what the oscillator does is that it actually has an electromagnetic drum and this is what you're actually hearing when you hear the oscillator it has this drum and through electromagnetism of sort of positive and negative waves, you're actually moving that drum towards one or a positive or a pushing effect into the lungs. And then you're basically uh, causing a negative effect. You're pulling now outside or pulling air from what would be the alveolus and kind of sucking it, if you will. And this is why they call this sort of active inspiration and then active expiration or you know your exhalation you're pulling air out and it's happening so fast just so you're doing this if you look at the oscillator the old school oscillators you will actually see the drum moving if you have a hertz that's low enough you'll hear it and you'll actually see the drum moving back and forth back and forth back and forth so this means that you're pushing air into the lung and then you're sucking air out actively. This is one of the big differences between the oscillator and jet ventilation. The jet ventilator, what it does is that it basically has an ongoing flow and then it has a flow interrupter going at a rate that you have set to cut that flow at a certain pace that you've set it at. So what you're actually doing is like a stream you've got a stream and then you're basically blocking that flow each time so it goes tick 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 or what oh physiologically what does that mean or what difference is that from the oscillator as i mentioned before oscillator push pull what happens now with jet ventilation is that you're pushing but because there's an interruption, there isn't an active pull. You're not negatively trying to get air out. You've got a passive exhalation. When that interrupter shuts off that flow, now the body passively, using stretch and using its own lung mechanisms, will try and relax to get air out as opposed to the drum that's trying to suck air out. Now, why is this important? Well, this may be important for things like leak syndromes, for th things like pulmonary interstitial emphysema, where there may be air that's out into the interstitium. It's not in the alveolus, it's in the tissue, little tiny air bubbles. Well, if you're sucking out air 900 times a minute, you may not have time or you may not give time for those little air bubbles to seep back into the alveolus to be sucked out. And there's where the common thought of using a jet ventilator for these type of things is better. If you've got air out in the cavity, that relaxation of the thorax will allow air to then seep back for you to be able to take it out through the ventilator. Same thing with pulmonary interstitial emphysema. Little air pockets will now have a little bit of time relaxing into the alveolus to be able to then be blown out with the next relaxation breath. So that's basically the big, big differences between the two. I hope this helps. I know this is a short video. If you have any other questions, please let me know. If you like this, you know, hit like. If you haven't subscribed, definitely do so. And if you have other questions, like I said, put it in the comment section. I'm happy to address them. If you want other videos on any of these topics, I will get it done for you. See you later.